Hello! It's another wine review time. Hey, hey. I like this time of the week. Sundays. I just sit down and test one of the wines I've made recently. This week, seaweed wine. Remember how I went and gathered some seaweed from the beach and made some seaweed wine? Didn't think it was going to work out, I didn't. But it has. Have a look at this wine. It is bright, it is clear, it is gorgeous in the bottle it is. I thought it would be murky. I thought it would be, well, what would you expect from a seaweed wine? I would not have thought it would be so sparkly, bright, clear. I've tried some. I'm still here. It's not as potent as my mushroom wine that made me see UFOs, but that's a different story. Some people didn't like my UFO video, they didn't. Got me banned from Reddit, it did. Well, at least the UFO subreddit. They can't take a joke. They need a glass of mushroom wine. Or seaweed wine. That's my adventures with mushroom wine. Awesome stuff. Right. Seaweed wine. Let's have a look. A few bottles here. I had a few last night. Awesome. Well, here we go. Cheers. Really makes me want to head down to the beach, sniff the sand, and wiggle my toes in the seaweed. It has that saltiness to it. That, I wouldn't say salty, it's more iodine -y. It's very pleasant though. It would go really well with a decent bit of salmon done over a barbecue. And some prawns. Well, eggs, yes. A nice surf and turf. It needs something a bit more meaty with it, I think, to help carry it forward. But the actual flavour isn't too bad. I mean, it's very drinkable. It's very free ingredient wise. Well, something that is foraged and only used a wee bit of sugar. What else did I use? Lemon juice. You can taste the lemon. I think I would have added more lemon to the recipe to help carry forward that iodine-y flavour and make it more of a seafood style dish. No, it's not a dish, it's a wine. Make it more of a seafood style wine. But I'm just really impressed with how it's turned out. There's no shells, there's no sand, no dead fish. And to be honest, my only criticism of this wine is the length of time it took to start fermenting. This wine, because there was such a high salt content in the seaweed, it did take a while to get going. So I did have to add some more yeast nutrient to the actual fermentation process. I haven't included that in the recipe, but I will amend that in due course. I will make this again. A proper, even more thorough recipe. Because it's delicious. If you like nettle wine, try seaweed wine. It has that same earthy texture to it. A bit peaty, a bit rustic. Anyway, I digress. Hope I don't start seeing UFOs today. It's wine. It's very good. Don't know how I ended up with two glasses. I only poured one. But yeah. Seaweed wine. It's well worth making. It's well worth drinking. Next time you're down the beach, go for a forage. Go for a rummage. And gather some seaweed. And some limpets. And mussels. Go for it. UFOs. I do apologise if I upset you. All you ufologists out there, I have to say I am sorry if I upset you by saying I had seen and caught a UFO on tape. It's not as if I intended to upset you. 
If I wanted to upset anyone, I would have put it on the flat earthers. So why don't you subscribe? See the next video about red kidney bean wine. I'm still waiting for it to be perfect before I try it. I might have a long wait. It may never be perfect. But I can try. So I hope you've enjoyed this video about seaweed wine. And stay tuned for more UFO and red kidney bean wine. Enjoy.